Hey guys, this is Rob Dunn again from the Spiceworks community, and I'm going over, actually it's an addendum actually to one of my other videos that I put out for um, one of my plugins. It's the Subcategories XML plugin, and I see a lot of people having questions about how to configure this um, so that you can uh, see the subcategories set up on the user side of the uh, Spiceworks app, which would be the, uh, the user portal like you see here. Um, it seems like a lot of people have issues with this. Um, it, it's not the most straightforward thing to set up, but once you see someone do it in practice, it should be pretty easy for you to do as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to do this with a custom ticket form. So uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're logged into Spiceworks as your admin user. Um, I think it has to be the um, the Spiceworks administrator, not a help desk admin, but an actual Spiceworks administrator in order to do this. And you can tell that you're logged in properly um, if you go to the portal and you see these menu options at the top. This is the portal designer view. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do, and actually what I'm, what I'm uh, set up here, I set up an additional tab um, to work with. You can do this on your home if you like. Um, I just did this so that I did, wouldn't mess up my home tab with my uh, my demonstration here. So the first thing you're going to need to do is uh, click on manage content and we're going to go down we're going to find a uh, custom ticket form and hit close and you see here we have just a generic custom ticket form with very little information but basically you've got your ticket summary your description and that's it you have a save button uh, but you're going to want to allow your users to create a category uh, for their tickets, or that's what you want, that's what you're here for. So what you're going to need to do is create uh, or add some additional attributes. Well, by default, um, you know, unless you've enabled these already, by default the attributes are not going to show up over here because you probably have not set them up in your application to show on a ticket form. So um, what we need to do is we need to go to the Spiceworks settings, which I have open in another tab here, and you're going to need to go to the uh, advanced and international options and this is of course assuming that you have subcategories already installed you followed the documentation you've created the custom attributes down here and uh, everything else is working so what you need to do is you need to make sure that you enable all these to be used in the portal uh, but not just these, you have to have the category enabled as well. And why do we need that, you might ask? Because if you're using it, you probably have noticed that the default category attribute is disabled on the help desk ticket view. So when you go and you're working as a help desk admin, you create a new ticket or you're working with a ticket, you don't actually see the category attribute in the ribbon bar below the uh, kind of the, the, the ticket uh, pane above. Um, that is because the subcategories plugin replaces that or just hides it from view. Um, but you do need this. And the reason is for the portal, you have to have that enabled, is because the menu system will look for the category attribute on the page and it will replace it with the menu system. So again, enable the category for your portal view for your tickets and then make sure that your first, second, third, fourth subcat attributes are also enabled for the portal. So we're going to go back to our uh, test portal site here. We're going to refresh and you'll see now we have these attributes available to us. So uh, here all we have to do is we need to um, add a category attribute. We're going to click on that. It's going to add it right here. We're going to uh, add a first subcat and actually the, the order of these does not really matter although I'm going to do them in order because I have a little bit of OCD and that's pretty much all you have to do in order to enable the um, the categories or the the the, uh, the menuing system to create itself on the portal and a lot of people what they'll say is like oh my gosh I've enabled all these things and I still don't see the menu system well again you have to make sure um, and this is in the documentation, that you are not logged in as the administrator. The whole point of this view is to be able to see all the fields that are enabled for the form. If we were to hide these from you, you would have a hard time removing them later on. So the real test then is to open up another uh, browser 
as an end user, and I've got one here in Chrome. Oops, let me maximize that. Okay, and uh, we're not logged in here, and I haven't refreshed yet, but the whole purpose here is to make sure that we're logged in as a, as a non-admin user, so an end user. We're going to refresh. Oh, maybe I didn't save it yet. Save. <laughs> i got to do that first. Okay, so we'll go back to our view, hit refresh, and there you go. And now we have our menuing system. Now, if I go back to my view, and let's say I just I edit this, and let's take out the category, and you'll see what I mean by this. We'll hit save again, refresh, and then you see that it doesn't quite work. You can't see the menu system at all. Go back here. We're going to add the category. We can move it anywhere we want. Save. Refresh. And you'll see that you just a glimpse of the uh, the custom fields um, before the menu system replaces it. Uh, the purpose for that was was basically there's no real easy way program um, with programming um, to predict the values of the fields like what IDs they have and whatnot they're all just kind of like named generically so what I have to do is I have to basically um, wait for the form or the fields to be rendered and then I hide them um, it's kind of a pain in the butt I know I'm sorry but that's the whole idea behind that that's why you see those just for a second so anyway, um, here we go. We can click our fields. We'll get our categories here. We can uh, type in our information up here, and we can submit a ticket. And that's pretty much it. Um, for the built-in ticket form, just make sure that you have um, you just have the category, subcat, and all that. I mean, it's already enabled here, as you can see. You just have to make sure that those attributes are on your ticket form. That's all you need to do. So again. Category, first subcat, second subcat, third subcat, fourth subcat. Make sure those are on your form. The plugin should do the rest, and uh, hopefully uh, everything else is working out for you. And so if you have any troubles with this, please go to my, um, my plugin page uh, for subcategories XML. You can just do a search on uh, even Google for that matter. Um, and uh, give me a comment there. And then if we have any troubles, we'll open up a... Uh, uh, a support thread in the uh, Extending Spiceworks group and we'll get screenshots going, we'll see what's happening and I'll, I'll try and help you out. Okay, and once again this has been Rob Dunn uh, with another Spiceworks Plugin 101 uh, video and hope to see you next time. Thanks again, we'll see you in the community.